Uh, number one that I want you to know today is the following. I sent out 8.2. Has anybody gotten into at least big uh, ideas yes. this morning? And did that show up? Yes. Okay. So, uh, guys, we spent a lot of time uh, in the last section kind of identifying some uh, definitions, and there were a lot of definitions uh, in the last section, which was titled Points, Lines, and Planes. And uh, hopefully you kept track of all of those definitions uh, in order to be able to do what we're going to do today. But, guys... Uh, the thing we we're going to be working with the most today in 8.2 are going to or, or, or there's going to be some line segments, I guess I should say. It's going to be measuring and constructing some segments. All right. Segment. Define to me again a line segment. What characteristics do a line segment have? Does it go on forever? No. No. There is a definite. What's this first one called? starting point and there's a definite ending point. Listen to this question. What can you measure the distance of lines or line segments? You can measure a line segment because there's a start and an end. Okay. So guys, what we want to look at doing today, uh, uh, talking about measuring and constructing uh, line segments, uh, we need to ask ourselves, how can you measure and construct a line segment? Believe it or not, guys, there's a lot of goals here. And you're going to hear me start talking in this chapter along with the, um, the next few chapters about what's a postulate, how do, we, how do we confirm this stuff. And our goal is to accomplish uh, what we're setting out to do today. Uh, first, to use the ruler postulate. Okay, I'll tell you what that is in a second. Okay, secondly, we're going to copy segments and compare segments for congruence. And then we're going to use the segment addition postulate, which is pretty simple. Okay. Again, can you add? Can you subtract? Yes. Can you measure? If you can do those three things today, you'll be just fine. You'll be very, very fine. Okay. Um, guys, uh, some vocab today. Uh, you're going to start hearing me talk about this word a lot, postulate right here. Postulate, how about I'm going to read that? rule that is just accepted without proof, okay? So for instance, maybe I say this. Um, it's a rule that's accepted without proof. So I might say something like this. Um, when you have two lines that intersect like this, this angle here and this angle right over here, they're always equal, okay? The angle on the left, the angle on the right are always equal. That's just a rule, okay? A postulate is much like a rule. It's something that we just accept and it is what it is. Okay. Second vocab I have up there is axiom. Well, what's it say, guys? Well, if you hear me say postulate, I can replace that with axiom. So an axiom is just a what? It's a rule. It's a mathematical rule. All right. You guys have talked about coordinates before in the coordinate plane, an xy plane. I can go left and right, I can go up and down. I can go left and right, I can go up and down. Okay, uh, Jared, your notes are up here. Uh, coordinate is just a number that corresponds to a point. It's a number that corresponds to a point. So you might have a line like this. You might have a point right here on that line. And they might say, you know what, that value is 4. So anytime you talk about coordinate, you're always, you're always specifying a point, but you're attaching a value to that point. If I said find a point like 4 comma 6, would you know what to do in a coordinate plane? If I said here's a point 4 comma 6, would you know what to do to plot it? How would you get to 4 comma 6? From the origin, go what direction first? Right 4 and then up how much? Six to plot that point. That four comma six defines its place in space. All right? Distance. Distance from one point to another. So as an example, here's a line segment. Start to end. If I call this 16 right here, how many units long is that line segment, guys? 16. Okay. Talk about construction a little bit. Guys, construction is a geometric drawing that uses a limited set of tools. Usually a straight edge and a, what's a compass in math? 
you go all right, you know that wonderful <coughs> pokey thing on the end and you draw circles with it, you swing arcs with it. Okay, they use those to, to do construction. So basically it's a straight edge and a compass that we use to make constructions. We're not gonna get into that too much this section, but we will down the road. Uh, congruent segments, segments that have the what? Segments that have the what? Same length. Same length. So if this distance is four and this distance is four, are those two segments indeed congruent or not? They're congruent because they're both the same length. Okay? And then the last thing you're going to hear me talk about is betweenness. And this is probably the most important one. I want to talk about points being between one another. First of all, the definition says up there, when three points are what, guys? They have to be in the same line then one point is between the others. So here's an example right here. If this was my line, first of all, are those three points collinear? Do they fall on the same line? So what I'm gonna do is this, maybe I label them. Maybe I label them A, B, and C. Guys, use that segment right there, come up with a phrase that uses the word between based on the three points on that line or the three points that are collinear. Give me a phrase about B as it relates to A and C. What would you say here, guys? B is what? Between what two points? So B is between A and C. B is between A and C. Guys okay definition wise? Sure. I have a question right here. Here's a line. Is B between A and C there? Yeah. No. I'm hearing yes, I'm hearing no. No, it's not. Okay, so we're changing that. Why are we going no? Yeah, all three points, and anytime you use that word between, all three points have to lie on the line. same line. They have to be collinear in other words. So if you get something like that and you get a statement say, if I would make a statement right here, you tell me true or false with this statement. B is between A and C there. True or false there? False. False. It has to be collinear. It has to be on the same line. So don't get caught up there. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to do some measuring up here. You're going to measure a little bit differently. Uh, just looking at this right here, but uh, I think this will make sense to you. I honestly do. Uh, guys... Number one, simply using the ruler postulate. It says, measure the length of the line AB to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, okay? First of all, I don't know if I labeled anything on that line, so let's do that. They're calling this the length of segment AB. I want you to do a couple things. I don't know how to get this stuff in Microsoft Word yet. I'm gonna need some help someday, but put a segment up above AB right there. We're gonna call this left end A, this left end B. Guys, do you agree that on this ruler, like you have in front of you, from the left edge to one, that's one centimeter, right? And then two centimeters, and then three, and so on, all right? Let's we'll see how close this works. I want to see how close my ruler is to yours. It says, measure uh, the length of AB to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So, guys, if I got right to here, look at where I'm pointing at. I'm past two centimeters, and I'm between two and three centimeters right there. How would you read that mark right there that I pointed at? How many centimeters? 
2.5, okay, 2.5. So what I want you guys to do, so I want you to take this ruler and I want you to measure AB to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. You guys tell me what you get, oh my gosh. What do you guys end up with when you measure that centimeter? What do you guys get when you measure that? When you measure that in your notes, centimeters wise, what do you guys get? Measure that bottom line down there. What do you guys get? Come to a consensus. Eight, I'm hearing eight. How many else are eight? Eight as well. I'm hearing eight up here. Karen, what'd you get? Oh, I'm Was it eight also? From one to nine would be eight, right? Okay, so you guys put down eight centimeters in your notes. I'm going to do the same. Now, the ruler I'm using up here, according to what I have, how many centimeters long does this appear to be? Twelve. About twelve. Okay, about twelve. Now, guys, if I was like twelve and maybe, I don't know, maybe I said it ends right there, maybe this would be like 12.3 centimeters, depending on how you measure it. So the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So this is like between 12 and 13, it goes 12.1 for that first mark, 12.2 for the second, 12.3, and so on. Okay, how many marks are there going to be, how many of these little marks are there going to be between uh, whole number to whole number, guys? Like in other words, from one to two, you would go one point, one first for the first mark between them, 1.2 for the second, and so on. Are we clear on that? I'm assuming we know that. I'm assuming we know that. Is that true? Okay, I hope so. My time, though, I've learned that I should never assume. Okay, so what did you guys get for a value here when you measured this? How many centimeters? Eight centimeters, okay? This is called using the ruler postulate. It's just a rule that's accepted without proof, okay? That line's eight centimeters. Why? Because we measured it. You just accept it, all right? So hopefully you know how to measure that part, right? Okay, then let's start looking at part two here, guys. Guys, example two, comparing segments for congruence. So up there it says plot some points, P, Q, R, and S in a coordinate plane. And then we want to determine if uh, P, Q, and R, S are, are congruent. So let's plot our points first. Uh, the first point we need to plot is negative 4, comma, 3. So how do I get to the point negative 4, comma, 3 in our coordinate plane, kiddos? Yep, negative 4, comma, 3. How are you going to get there first? Over so I'm going to go left 4. Yep. And then how far up? How far up then? So left 4 and up 3. That puts me right here. What are we going to label that point? What are we going to call that vertice? It is negative 4, comma, 3. What letter is going to represent that location? P. P represents that location. Okay. How do you get to Q? 3 comma 3. Over to right 3. Right 3 and up 3. We'll call that Q. Next one is R, which is negative 1, negative, or I'm sorry, negative 1, positive 4. So I'm going to go left 1 and up how much? And call that point R. And then S is negative 1, negative 2. Left 1 and down 2. All right, so there's the points that we've plotted right there so far. Okay, would you guys agree I've got everything plotted correctly? So now it starts talking about the comparison of two segments. It says, hey, within this right here, determine whether P, Q, and R, S are congruent. So I want a segment from P to what, guys? P to Q. So I'm going to draw that right here. Here's that segment, P to, whoops, come on. Here's that segment, P to Q. And then the other segment that we want is from what to what? Uh, R to S. Okay, R to S. And there's that segment right there. All right, so you guys help me out here. I want to know if they are congruent. So simply put, we need to figure out the length of each of those segments, from P to Q and from R to S. Well, guys, by drawing these in here, I can simply count the number of units from P to Q. So how long is it from P to Q? How many units, guys? I'm coming up with seven when I count that. Are you guys getting the same thing? When I go from P to Q, it looks like I go left one, two, 
three, four, five, six. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so P to Q is how many units long? Seven. Seven units long. Okay. R to S then. Count the length from R to S, the number of units from R to S. So if we go one, two, three, four, five. What do we get there? Okay, so we said P to Q, that segment length is seven. What are we calling RS? What's the distance there? What's the distance from R to S, kiddos? Okay, so the question becomes this. Are PQ and RS congruent or not congruent? Okay, so I'm going to say PQ is not congruent. This is a symbol we use for congruency. It's an equal sign with a little squiggly mark up there. PQ is not congruent to what, guys? Okay, and the reason they weren't the same distance. Okay. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Okay. Are we okay with that? I don't know how to make this much more difficult. I'm trying to make it difficult. I'm trying to make it difficult. Is it working? No. Oh, my goodness. No. Questions so far? Anybody? No. I told you this stuff was easy today, didn't I? Okay. I don't see anybody's head just turning round and round and round and round right now. I think you're all on, on the same page as I am now? No, not Kinsey. Not Kinsey? <laughs> That's not funny. Britain, it looks to kill you to be dead right now. I'm just saying. Okay. I think Kinsey does a great job. Kinsey, know that. I think you do a wonderful job. So keep it up, okay? All right. Okay, here we go, guys. We're on example three. Everybody example three? Everybody example three? Okay. Guys, it says using uh, segment addition posture. We can find... Um, we can find the lengths of unknown parts of segments if we have maybe um, two lengths put together end to end, or maybe if we know an overall length and a shorter segment within that segment. Pretty simple stuff here, guys. Uh, I believe I labeled this X, Y, and Z, didn't I? All right, guys, so in this right here, what are we trying to find? What distance? What distance are you trying to find? What's it say up here in A? So to use the segment addition postulate, basically they're saying x, y, this first segment, x to y plus the second segment, y to z, is your overall x to z. What, uh, what distance did I put in there for x to y, guys? And then how about y to z? What's that distance? So guys, if I wanted to find a distance from x to z, what, uh, what, uh, what do you think you guys want to do? It says using the segment addition. Postulate. What do you think you want to do to find that distance from X to Z? Yeah. Isn't the total distance from X to Z right here going to be this distance from X to Y, 31, plus this distance, 14? What's that make that? 45. Yeah, X to Z is found by taking 31 plus 14, which is 45 units long. 45 units long, okay? Then, find the distance from C to D. Well, this one's interesting, because right here I put down B and C and D. And down here I'm telling you the overall distance. What did I tell you the overall distance was? 37. So the distance from B to D is 37, and what am I telling you B to C is here, kiddos? All right, so show of hands, please. How am I going to find that distance from C to D, Karen? What do you think you want to do? She's saying this segment right here is 37 minus 22. Jacob, your hand was up. Do you agree with that? What is 37 minus 22? 15. So the distance from C to D is 15. Boom. Right, boom. All right, last page. Very last page. Very last page. All right, the 
city is shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. First of all, that is the state of what? California. California. That looks like almost that the San Andreas like fault line there, doesn't it? Okay. All right. I believe I labeled some cities in here. What was this top one up here? Sacramento. 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 Which I believe Sacramento was the capital of California. Is that correct? I've never been to California. Nope. I thought you went to. Oh, you went to Las Vegas. You sly dog. I've been about here before, but never here. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna abbreviate it SB. Don't you put an O in the middle? <laughs> I could go for a punch. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that. I, I want some punch right now. Okay, hey, I need help here, guys. What was the distance that I put in here from Sacramento to Fresno in your drawing? Is it 158? 158. And this is obviously going to be measured in miles. And then how about from Fresno to San Bernardino? 250. All right, so let's read what's going on here, guys. It says, hey, the city shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. It says, find the distance from Sacramento, California, to San Bernardino, California. San Bernardino, San Bernardino, San Bernardino. There you go, California. How are you going to find this, kiddos? What are you going to do to find a distance from Sacramento to San Bernardino? So what are you going to add together? How many miles? Questions about what we've done today? I'm concerned that if we struggle with this, we're going to have a lot of problems down the road. Okay. This should be easy peasy, and you fill in the rest. Lemon squeezy. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop there.